18 months ago, John Jans and I filmed a vertical tasting of the Duke's Magpie Hill Reserve Riesling 2016 to 2020. This video remains very relevant today as these wines are not only excellent on release, but certainly brilliant wines in the cellar. So if you have any of these wines, any of the 2016 to 2020, this is probably a great video for you to watch to gauge how they might be going in your cellar at the present time. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Erin Larkin and this is John Jens and today we're looking at the Duke's Vineyard Magpie Hill Reserve Riesling from the Prongrats in the Great Southern. Um, John, I know you're itching to um, explain to us some of the points and context around Duke's. Take it in away. In a former life, I was a statistician and by the end of this, you'll understand why. Okay, so Erin and I live in Western Australia and we are blessed with Cabernet, Chardonnay, and Riesling and Semillon Sauvignon Blanc. Here's why with Riesling. Um, in 2014, for the first time, James Halliday gave more than 50% of his highest pointed Rieslings to Western Australia. So about, um, I think about 14 out of the top 24 or top 25. That had never happened before because the Clare and Eden Valleys had always, in my lifetime, and I'm from the Eastern States, I'm from Victoria, had always dominated um, Halliday's rankings and Australia's rankings. And I'll add to that for perspective that I'm a Riesling fanatic. I got into the wine industry because I love Riesling so much. The great Rieslings of John Vickery at Leo Brewings in the early days. I thought they were truly extraordinary. Um, so firstly, Riesling's fantastic. The Great Southern is really good. Um, with, with the Great Southern Rieslings, we've had developments since 2014. In every year since, James Halliday has pointed more high pointed Rieslings um, as being from the Great Southern than from either the Clare or Eden Valleys and with good reasons. The wine styles are slightly different. Um, the wine styles are slightly finer, slightly more elegant, uh, more perfumed than aromatic. They are lime rather than lemon lime, and they're very high in acid. The acidities in, a, in our terms, which a lot of people won't understand, are 2.9 to 3, occasionally 3.1, whereas they're usually a touch higher than that in the Eastern States. But the high acid is actually enveloped inside that dense, fine fruit. Um, and it, it's very subtle because we, you don't realise the density of the fruit that's absorbing all of that acidity. And um, so as the, years, as the years have gone by, the wines have got better and better and better from the Great Southern. From 2014 on, the wines are, are staggeringly good. Um, then we get to the winemaker of the Magpie Hill Reserve range from Dukes, Rob DeLetti at Castle Rock. Where do you start? Pretty good. <laughs> pretty she's, good. she's always in the understatement. Um, uh, Rob DeLetti. So from a, from, for people in the Eastern States, he's in the Prongrups. You guys probably couldn't pinpoint the Prongrups in a map of Australia or a map of Western Australia. He's in the middle of nowhere. He's got a tiny vineyard. He's an extraordinary winemaker. I'm going to guess that he's won 25 trophies for Sauvignon Blancs, for Rieslings, Chardonnays, Pinots and Shiraz in capital city wine shows um, over the last 25 years. Chairman of Judges of Perth last year. And... Um, um, has made of, since about 2014 because he contracts makes for contract makes for several people as well, and most of them are pretty good mates of ours. Um, he's won about 25 um, percent. He's produced about 25 percent of James Halliday's highest pointed rieslings since uh, about 2014 2015. Unbelievable for a bloke in the middle of nowhere that no one's ever heard of. Truly extraordinary. Um, the Magpie Hill wines. Oh, I better add with Robbie that and you. I've got to put this into context. Unless Erin and I give you these things, because we do more research than most, you could never understand this. You couldn't understand how good this guy is. So we'll use Halliday rather than the Riesling circuit. There's not many ways you can evaluate wines um, from, a third, uh, from a third source, from an external point. But let's do it with Halliday in this instance. Um, since about 2013, 2014, um, Rob has picked up somewhere between eight and 22 or 23 percent 
each year of Halliday's um, uh, highest pointed Rieslings of the year um, from across Australia against the greatest in the country. This is a tiny little winery in the middle of nowhere, but contract making for other people as well. Anywhere from 8 to 21 or 22% of the Rieslings per year. It's really quite extraordinary. Um, then we get eventually to the Magpie Hill Reserves. Dun, 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 fanfare. Um, so Robbie makes these. Um, whatever it is, this is totally different to the other wines he makes under contract. The wines are longer, classier, perhaps slightly higher in acidity. Um, there's a graciousness and charm to them. They are truly extraordinary. I want to add at the risk of boring people to death, which I've got the great capacity to do, um, that... Um, uh, I've lost my train of thought. With the 2016, I wrote an article long before James or long before anyone else reviewed the wine, to my knowledge, and I was astounded by the quality of the fruit, the length of flavours, the textures, the finish, the aftertaste. I couldn't believe it. I'm 72. I'm 72. Um, when I tried that, when I was young, John Vickery at Leo Beerings was the great Riesling maker in Australia. He is the reason that I got into wine, um, because of his Rieslings. The 19, I've tried plenty of earlier ones, but certainly from the 1973 vintage, which was a great vintage for them. As the years went by, Brian Crozer at Petaluma became Australia's great Riesling maker, became Australia's great Riesling maker. By the late 90s or into the 2000s, Jeff Grosset um, at, with Polish Hill and Watervale became Australia's great Riesling maker without question. Unparalleled, dominant, truly wonderful. Um, when I saw the 16, I wrote an article and said, good heavens, this is extraordinary. This is a great wine. Is it time the baton is about to be changed? The fruit quality in this is so good. The wine, the wine making quality is so good. Do we have a new contender on the block for the greatest Riesling maker in the country? Then, shortly afterwards, some months later, Halliday came out uh, at 98 points and I think his Riesling of the year. The 17 followed the following year. I came out and line balled it with the. Um, actually, I think we probably should go into this when we do them bit by bit by bit. So okay. I think rather than going ahead with this now, Let's we, talk. we should yeah, go into the wines. Yeah. All right. Okay. So um, something that I just wanted to give you some context on before we dive into them, and, and I'll be quick, but I recently spent a couple of days in the Paronga. And so, if, if to give you an idea of where it is, you drive south from Perth four hours and hit Mount Barker, straight down the Albany Highway, and you hang a left at this big roundabout right before town and you get into the Prongrup. So the Prongrup is this crazy outcrop of rock that kind of rises out of what is otherwise pretty flat ground and they're steep, dramatic formations with vineyards kind of perched mostly on the northern face of it. Um, but there's a lot of difference in in microclimate and water, which is a really big deal in the Prongrup, um, between each of the facets and ravines that, that occur on this rock face. So Duke um, has got this Magpie Hill Reserve vineyard is, on, is a pretty unremarkable um, patch of dirt, really. Incredible outlook. I mean, he's sort of, he's on this sort of flattish sort of area, but literally right behind it is a face of rock. So whilst the vineyard itself is sort of um, quite flat, the, the outlook is, is pretty dramatic. He has got these vines, a are pretty spindly, really. I mean, I drove down there through the through the rows with him. It's amazing to think that the fruit that comes off them is as powerful as this is. These are incredibly powerful but very restrained wines. So let's start with the 16. So we've got here the 16, the 17, the 18 New Block, 18 Magpie Hill Reserve, 19, 20. 21 is still in barrel, no, in, in tank, uh, and it'll be bottled, I guess, in the next four months or so, so we don't have that to look at yet. But this is as, as recent as it gets. So 16, in the far right-hand glass for you, John, yep. is the 16. So um, in terms of vintage conditions, this is a warmer year than, than the following 17, which is very cool. Um, and I, I really think you can taste that in this wine. Do you think so? I mean, it's I find this quite rich and full. Full, placid, long, 
but still refined and elegant, and, and it is refined and elegant. And the eastern states, I mentioned before about the uh, lemon lime versus lime. So this is almost perfumed and um, just very classy, very understated, even though it's bigger than most of the others, but a lovely balanced, beautiful drink of wine and deservedly holidays, reason of the year. This is like jasmine and lavender sort of characters alongside citrus pith. Um, for me, when we looked at these wines prior to coming um, on, on air, the acid is a real standout, and I don't mean that because they're very high acid, they are, but it's the way that the acid presents. There's a real kind of ripple and line and, and um, uh, ridge of acid through all of these wines, and I find that quite... Uh, thrilling, actually. So, but the 16 is the most embossed. I think the the acid and the fruit are quite matched in the 16. I liked it. This was this was um, probably middle of the points for me. Um, beautiful wine, but I think that there's some grace to come. So, at this stage, this could have been the best wine he'd made to date. Quite but possibly, but yeah. things get better from there. Yes. Yeah. Um, Moving into wine number two, the 2017. So this really set the world on fire when it was released. This was Halliday's Riesling of the Year. Yes. Correct. And but also his highest pointed Riesling ever, the 99 points, and still right. Halliday's highest pointed Riesling ever. That's yeah. right. How could we forget? Um, this, for me, was the best Riesling on the table. If you have any of the 17 in your cellar, congratulations. It's completely sold out. Um, if you find any, it's really just luck and fortune that have led you there. This is an exceptional wine. I was thrilled to try it today. I just love it. I can't believe how good it is. Okay, so I'm a very, it's from a very, very cool vintage. Um, the West has had a series of very cool vintages when we're talking about um, climate change. We're very lucky and we're very grateful. Um, across the state, 17 cooler vintage. Um, this reminds me, not in style, but in structure of the 2002 Polish Hell from Jeff Grosset, which was a very, very cool year over there. James Halliday didn't get very high points. I think I looked recently, it was only 95 points. To me, it was one of the greatest Australian, in fact, up until recently, the greatest Australian wrestling ever made. I thought it was a superstar, even overriding those uh, 2000, uh, sorry, 1973s from John Vickery at Buring's, which I thought were great. Um, this is pure class. Fine, elegant, restrained. Again, I mentioned perfume rather than aromatics. Enormous length, subtle, understated. It's not big and blocky. It's fine, elegant, lingering. I love it. Um, high acid, but enveloped, so it's not obvious in any way. Just a delicious mouthful. You mentioned, um, if you're lucky enough to get it, I don't know how much. Do you know how much wine he makes each year? Each, <coughs> sorry, each year? I have no idea. It's it's okay. a really small amount. I mean, you'd know more about the retail allocations than I would, but it's um, it's it's little. I mean, the other thing to note is these Rieslings are routinely getting 96, 97, 98, 99 points um, from the Wine Companion. I mean, they are stratospherically high scores, and this wine retails at about forty five. At the time, probably this, I think probably under 40, uh, 45, 47 now. Yeah. yeah, so it makes it this ridiculous value proposition, certainly for cellaring. And looking at, um, actually, while I was down in the Prongrats, we looked at a 2006 and it was indistinguishable in colour, as these are um, from the younger vintages. Exceptional. Um, so this is showing no age whatsoever? No. Oh, it does like a soft, gentle toastiness, yes, yeah, but it's yeah, really, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. I look at Rieslings that are current vintage that look more aged than this, other Rieslings from other people. Um, this, it's also interesting to note, given the cooler year, this is in the 11% alcohol range. Um, we're then looking at sort of 12% for these guys, and this one is the highest uh, at 13% warmer year and there's a story there too but um really this is a I just can't I cannot tell you how much I love this wine I just think that it's a beautiful expression not only of the Paronga ups which have a very clear kind of bath salt talc sort of character to them it, and whenever I smell that jasmine flower bath salt character I know I'm in the Paronga ups it's just part of what they do and the acid is very very fine but bordering on austere which gives it this kind of structure and ridge within which I love um Anyway, it's a, it's a beautiful expression of Prongrup Riesling, Great Southern Riesling and Australian Riesling at that. It's 
something that we as Australian drinkers should be very proud of. Um, can, can I cut in just yeah, one second? Yeah, please. Look, with Erin talking about things, I reckon context is really important. And anything that I say, anything I come up with, believe everything that Erin says. Take anything I say with a grain of salt um, because I'm biased. Uh, but um, what I want to say is that if you look, and I told you I was a statistician, if you look at James Halliday's points from 19, uh, 2014 onwards, um, then uh, Grosset has... I think two reasonings, either highest or equal highest, from 2014 to 2020 in the Halliday's Wine Companion, has two wines, two Rieslings, highest or equal highest points, and that's the Polish Hill. Um, uh, Crawford River and uh, Seppel Strumborg each have perhaps one or one or two. Forest Hill Block One from the Great Southern uh, from Denmark, fantastic wine that you also may never have heard of, and you better start looking for it because it's a very, very good wine. Five of the last seven vintages of the Magpie Hill Reserves um, are either top or equal top in James Halliday's Wine Companion points. Truly extraordinary, way beyond anyone else. I really want to make the point that Aaron and I aren't wasting our time or your time in doing this. These are fantastic wines, are fantastic reasons in the Australian context. And rather than being idiosyncratically Australian style, these, these are moving towards an international Riesling style of real quality, as Jeff Grosset is also. And Jeff is now, in the last couple of years, as you and I know, last couple of years has produced some great Rieslings as well as some of the best of these, which are included amongst the greatest in the country. I didn't want to derail you because when he's on a track, he's on a track. But uh, the Forest Hill Block 1 Riesling, so the 2020, which will be released um, later this year in September 2021, um, is... A ridiculous wine bookmark that for the release because just say that again the forest hill block one 2020 riesling thank you um which he made 60 cases of 60 cases i mean i said to him like i would like to buy one please can you put one aside and he was like i just made 60 so um no worries but you're gonna have to get on the first day um 2019 was such a low yielding year that they didn't make any so the 60 cases were two vintages really and then there's the 18. So and you're saying it's a great Riesling. It's a great Riesling, but it's also very, very small quantities as these are. So if you love them, you have to sort of be on ball, on the ball and, and buy them as they come. Let's talk about the new block, the 2018. So this one's slightly different. So this is a new planting within the same Magpie Hill Reserve vineyard. Um, this wine is not made by Rob Deletti. It's the only one. This is made by Mike Garland. Um, and... It's a very different style to the others. It was slightly cheaper. I think retail you could buy a six-pack for 180 um, It's no longer for sale on the website, so I assume if you want to purchase it, you would have to find it around the place. Um, they, haven't, they didn't make one in 19 or 20 as far as I can see. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a different style. It's richer and fatter and almost more broad than the others. It has the same vineyard DNA. You can see that. It has the jasmine and the the... The acid has that same ripple and curve, but it's um it's a very different wine, I think. More upfront, more placid, more obvious, delicious, but without the same fine, lingering, higher acid and class of the other ones, in my opinion. I think it's lovely, and I would definitely buy it. We have retail stores as well as restaurants. I would recommend it without question at that price, but the others are better, yes. in my opinion. Agree. Um, so on that, we move to the 18. So 18, as you know, and if you don't know, um, get ready. 18 was one of the greatest vintages um, known to man in WA. There was obviously slight variation within that, but it was stellar, right? So this 18 um, wine has all of the vine uh, all of the vintage characteristics that I would attribute to the year, which were power, ripeness, grace, length, all of them. If you're talking Chardonnay from Margaret River, if you're talking... Shiraz from Franklin, if you're talking Riesling from the Prongra, um, Grenache from the Swan Valley, it doesn't matter what variety it was, it was great in 18. This has all of the vintage hallmarks of the 2018 vintage. And for me, even though it's slightly richer, it's very, very streamlined and quite restrained. And I think that this wine will be one of the longer lived on the table. I, I, don't, I don't know, obviously, we never know. But, but just tasting it is still quite closed. Have you only worked out recently that 2018 was a really good vintage in WA? 
Just kidding. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> uh, uh, Erin has, from day one, uh, from her tastings, Erin has been saying that 2018 is the great village for most varieties across Western Australia. And she didn't mention Pinot in there, and she's putting those amongst the greats too. You know, in the um, in the wine companion this year with all of my notes, any wine that was a 2018, I'm sorry if you're a reader of the companion, but I've started with something like 2018 was the greatest vintage in the history of insert region and variety here because it's true, and the wines excel. So, off track, sorry. This guy here, well, that was my fault, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to be a smart aleck, which is also within my capacity. This guy, to me, it's richer, denser, stronger, all the words that you'd, more powerful, riper, um, um, lovely, very high points, but again, without the final charms on the, of the wine on, on either side of it. Oh, sorry, on the wine, on these two and the final two, in my opinion. For you. You're putting it above. I, this is my top. Wine yes. in this lineup, yes. um, and these two here occupy space two and three for me. Everyone's different because I love the nineteen. It's all about ranking. Love the nineteen. Um, put it slightly behind the eighteen, only slightly, um, and that's today because previously I've loved the nineteen above the eighteen. But this has got. This is very, very fine. Again, a cooler year, very low yields. This is a, a very fine and delicate expression of this Riesling, probably um, akin to the 17 but without the freak um, attributes of the 17, which I just, it's insane. Um, this is an incredible wine and I love it. I mean, I love it. Okay. Um Erin and I do have different opinions on some wines and we take pride in going our own directions and having our own palates. Um, I prefer the soft, fine, elegant, fragrant, stroke, perfumed, charms, long lingering, but um, better crafted wines than the previous vintages. I'm not sure how you craft a Riesling as such, but whatever it is, texturally, these I think are better than the earlier releases. And I put the 19 ahead of the 18, yeah. um, but and I love the 19. I love it. It's minerally. Yes. This is not minerally. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is minerally. So I love that about it. Yeah. No buts. I love that about it. Okay. It's a it's a it's a whisker between. I'm like, yeah, 97, 97 and a half, 98 sort of space for these wines. So it doesn't. It's immaterial. It's stylistic. Um, 2020. This 2020 was a super weird year, COVID and everything um, happening in the background, bushfires and awful things over east. I mean, it was a, it was a total bin fire. But 2020 in WA, the quality of wine was actually very, very good. It was warm. It was short. Vintage started early. It was compacted and dense and it finished early. So some winemakers or um, uh, Winnie from Lewin, David Wynn Stanley, the viticulturist, described 2020 as very civilised because they started and then they finished and it was done. There was no, like, panic around length and picking and rain and all the things. It was just hot and quick. Usually that's not a good thing for Riesling, but in this case um, I actually love the 2020. It's higher alcohol, but I don't think that you can see that. This is the only wine here that moves up into the 13% space. Um, this, to me, is incredibly fine very, very um, pithy. It's got a real citrus pith character. Um, it's minerally. It's got all of the bath salts from the Perongrup characters. I just, I love the 20. I do. I think it's great. Now, I'm always after context. Do you prefer it to, oh, so where do you put it in, con in contrast to the 18 and the, uh, and the 17, which you've pointed very highly? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's Aaron playing music. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, fantastic. Um, I reckon, and I might be wrong, but I reckon, I reckon I that... I JJ uh, mine. I reckon um, that um, Duke Ransom reckons this is his best yet. Yeah. I agree with him. So I love this. Mm. It's fuller and more placid than the gracious elegance of this. I'm putting uh, the 19 at number three. Magnificent wines, really, really grateful for the winery, which sent them up for us wow. to have a look at. 
You know, I haven't actually told you this thing about Duke. So Duke, Ian Duke Ranson, I can't call him Ian, it's weird, it's Duke. Um, he is he is really one of the the world's great people. He, you know when you meet people and you just think, God, you're, you're really great. You're, for Duke, he's, he's wise, he's funny, he's relaxed. You always take sort of genuine. genuine this, I just love everything that he's about. And to me, the fact that these wines came from a winery owned by him makes perfect sense. Um, sadly, Duke and his wife Hildy, um, also gorgeous. Duke described her. There's a there's a painting of, of Hildy in their um, cellar door and I was looking at it and I was like, wow, that, that woman's really beautiful. It's a young girl. They've been married for 60 years or something. And Duke said, oh, that was that's Hildy. She always was the most beautiful woman in the room. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Duke and Hildy, who we love, um, have left the Peronga up and have moved into a home in Albany, into their new home. Um so that he'll no longer be there full time, which is heartbreaking. And um, I look forward to seeing what they're going to be doing in the future. But uh, yeah, Duke, he's he's okay. a really special person. Yeah, I agree totally. And um, you feel, you can feel him. Yeah. Um, do you have any insights into the next the 2021? None. Okay. So given the way that we're looking over the years and with Halliday's points apart from our views, we are saying these guys and now with the latest g 110s out of Jeffrey Grosser, we are looking, I think, you're talking about the Forest Hills as well, which I agree with you on, we're now looking at the greatest Rieslings in the country, I think. I don't want to exclude anyone else, but and anyone else is up for, anything else is up for grabs, but these are certainly amongst the greatest, those ones I've just mentioned. I reckon they are great Australian wines. Riesling has never been better. These are the greatest Rieslings we've ever seen in the country. Once you include the two G110s and the Forest Hills, I believe. There's, um, I would also add to that uh, possibly the Franklin Estate Isolation Ridge Riesling, which is an exceptional wine. Um, of course, there's a, a, a swathe from the eastern states. We're not discounting that at all. Um, but really, uh, in, if you're a Riesling fan and you're buying Riesling to cellar, uh, this wine should be in your cellar without question. If you can get hold of it, the um, the Forest Hill Block 1 should be there too. Um, you should start collecting the Franklin Estate Isolation Ridge and, I mean, the Grosset G110 may be, may be Australia's greatest Riesling by a whisker, but that's something. It's an incredible wine. Erin keeps coming back to the fact that these are made, and the Forest Hills, etc. G110s are made in tiny quantities. You've got to get to your wine-loving wine store, go to a wine-loving wine store and get an order in long before they're released or I'm assuming you won't get them. These are great wines by Australian standards and heavily underpriced as compared to other varieties. Uh, and the G110 is mailing list only. Oh, I so didn't know that. So you sign up to the Grosset oh, mailing list and you're it. offered the wine. I think it was released March 1 this um, year. Do that and so you get them in future years. Extraordinary wines, yeah. Um, Thank you very much for listening to our first video back in what was something like 3,000 hours. We timed it. We had a timer running in all of that time. It's a ridiculous gap, a hiatus, um, but we tried in that time 1,400 different wines, so it was big. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps me. Uh, and until our next one, cheers. God bless. Ciao, ciao.